Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the difference. Finally, we get an easy problem. We're given two strings, S and T. T is generated actually using all of the characters from string S and adding one more character at some random position. Now, not only that, but the characters in T might be shuffled, meaning it, like they're not gonna necessarily appear in the exact same order as S. So what we want to do though is return the extra character that was added to T. How can we determine what it was? Well, there's actually many, many approaches for this problem. It's a pretty decent problem, I think, for an easy because you can learn a lot from it. Just by looking at these two strings, what do you think conceptually is an approach that we could use to solve it? Well, probably just count the number of occurrences for every single character in both strings. So assuming we do that, like let's say an S, there's one A, there's one B, there's one C, and one D. In string T, we have pretty much all of these. There's one A, one B, one C, one D, and now there's also an E as well. So what do you think is the extra character? probably E because it doesn't show up in the first string. But we might have the opposite case as well. Like maybe we have one A, one B, one C, but maybe we have two Ds in string T. So that's another possibility. Maybe we just have an extra occurrence of a character in string T and we don't have that in string S. Now, how do you think we can count the occurrences of each character? Well, we probably need a data structure for that. And in our case, we're gonna use a hash map. Now, yes, we are using extra memory for this solution, but we are also told that the input strings are only gonna consist from lowercase a through lowercase z. So now you tell me what is the, the memory complexity of using a hash map in that case. Well, there's up to 26 characters. That's definitely not big O of n. That's constant. So even though we're using a hash map, we don't really have an inefficient solution when it comes to memory, and we're only gonna have to iterate over each string once. So this is a pretty efficient approach. I'm gonna quickly code it up now. So like I said, we're gonna have a couple of hash maps. I'm gonna call them count S and count T. And of course I could iterate over each string to build the hash maps. In Python though, we can kind of cheat by using something called a counter. And that basically will do exactly what I as mentioned earlier, count the occurrences of each character in each string. And once we have that, we're going to iterate over every character in count T. We're being intentional about this. We're doing that for count T and not count S because like I mentioned, count T might have a character that doesn't occur in count S. And if it does, that's the character we want to return. So what I'm gonna check now is for this character, if it's not, in count s then it must be the solution that's our return value but like i also said the other case is that maybe the count now that we know for sure like if this does not execute then we know for sure that that character does exist in count s so then we check is the count of that character in s less than the count of that in t if that's the case once again we will return this character that's our result but if neither of these are the result, we're just gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop because we're guaranteed that T does have an extra character. One of these is eventually going to execute. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient even in terms of uh, memory, but there are a couple other approaches I'm gonna quickly show you. So one, conceptually, think about this in terms of instead of these being strings, what if these were arrays? Like an array is pretty much like a string, isn't it? And instead of being characters, what if they were numbers? Like what if we had a one, we had a two, we had a three and a four in the first array, and we had a one, two, three, four, and five in the second array. And now looking at this, you tell me, is there a different way for us to know what the extra would be in the second array? Probably just take the sum of all of these and the sum of all of these and from this subtract this. 
And then we would get the extra, which is five. That's our return value. Notice in this case, we don't really need an extra data structure like a hash map. So the only question that remains is how do we take characters and map them to integers? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Like we could just decide to map lowercase a to zero, lowercase b to one, and all the way up until z, which would be mapped to 25. But we can also use a more natural mapping, which is the ASCII mapping. Basically, every character is already encoded in binary to some integer, like the binary representation of every character is mapped to some integer. And we can just use that by itself. And so then once we take the sum like this and subtract it from this, we'll end up with some integer. Let's just say it's like 60 or something. And then we take that integer and we'll convert it back in to what the character actually is. I don't really know what it is off the top of my head, but maybe it's D or something. Most languages will have a way to do this mapping. I'll show you how to do it in Python, but it's just a matter of knowing like what the function is. Okay, so now let's do the next approach where we're going to have the sum of all characters in S and the sum of all characters in T. Initially, these are both going to be zero. I'm going to go over every character in S. I'm going to get the ASCII value of this character, which in Python, you can use the ORD function to do that. And we're going to add that to S. Same thing with the T, go through every character in T, add that to some T and get the ASCII value before you add it. Now, when we're actually returning, we're going to take sum t minus sum s and convert this into a character because it's an integer, but we want to ultimately return a character. And uh, whoops, this should actually be sum s. And so that's the entire code for not using a hash map. I guess this is the ASCII value solution. So let's run this to ensure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And for whatever reason, the memory usage actually looks higher than the previous solution. I don't know why that is, but there's one last solution I want to quickly show you. And while this solution is definitely not the best for this problem, I think it's slightly more complicated than it needs to be at least conceptually, I think this is a very, very good trick to know for certain problems. And that is about bit manipulation. There is a operation with bit manipulation that you might know. It's called XOR, exclusive OR. If you have a number, let's just say it's zero, and you exclusive OR it with a number, let's say it's seven, I think this is the binary representation of seven, you exclusive OR these, and this is kind of the character that denotes exclusive OR, you're basically taking every bitwise exclusive OR, which means if one of these bits is one and the other is zero, we get a one in the output. But if both of the bits are the same, whether they're both zero or for some reason they were both one, then we'd get a zero in the output. In this case, these three bits are one, these three bits are zero. So we're gonna get a one in all of these positions and zeros over here. Now, if you notice, when you XOR something with zero, you're always gonna get that value. So if I had like X, XORed with zero, we're always going to get X. Like this is kind of the math formula. Okay. But now what if we had the exact same number? If I took four and exclusive or it with four, what does four look like in binary? I think it's just uh one zero zero. So let's say we had this, or let's just actually say seven uh, XORed with seven. What would you get in the output? Well, if you XOR a number with itself, you're going to get zero in all of the values where the bits are one. So we get zero, zero, zero there. And where all the uh, bits are zero, we're also gonna get zero in the output. Basically taking a number and XORing it with itself is gonna give you zero. So knowing these facts, how can we use that to our advantage in this problem? If you've never seen this technique before, I would actually take a second and try to figure it out yourself. But if you've already seen this before, you probably already know what to do at this point. And that is we once again will get the integer representation of every single character. And we're going to have something like our result is initially going to be zero. We're going to take every single character and XOR it with zero and chaining all of those together. We know that for every character, there's going to be a duplicate in the other string. For almost every character, there's going to be a duplicate. So those are going to cancel out 
but we're going to be left with one extra character. In this case, it's an E, and that's the only one that's not going to be canceled out. And if you take that and XOR it with zero, you're going to get that as the result. And then we can take the integer representation and convert it back into a character and then return that character. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this solution. It's really easy to code up, but conceptually, I think it's a little bit worse than the previous solution I just showed you. And uh, memory wise, this is also pretty efficient. We're just using a single integer in the output. Okay, so coding this up is gonna be pretty much the same as the explanation. We're gonna go through every character in S, XOR it with our result. So result XORed with the character, and then do the same for every character in T. It's going to XOR every character. And then before we return, we want to actually take this result and convert it into a character but actually that reminds me before i even do that this is a character you can't really xor a character with a integer because that's what result is you can't really do that in python python is a strongly typed language most languages i don't think will allow you to do this maybe c does it's a weakly typed language but python even though it's not statically typed it is strongly typed so we do have to take these characters and convert them into integers before we do the XOR. So we're gonna do that with ORD. And if we're uh, using the ASCII values, we should uh, take the integer and convert it back into a character like this. And so now let's run the code. And as you can see on the left, it works and is also relatively efficient, but I, I would personally think that these numbers are pretty random. I think if I re-ran this a few more times, we might get better or worse results. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to these. But if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.